Good morning, investors. Are you guys ready for another action-packed week? Of course, it's bringing some uncertainty. The bank's situation still out there. We'll talk all about what happened this weekend. Emergency weekend meetings. Of course, we need to talk all about the banking situation. And we'll cover some other stocks. Pin Duo Duo coming in with some earnings today. Foot Locker earnings. We can take a look. What Bed Bath and beyond disappear we'll talk about it looks like there's a reverse uh split that could be happening in the future and we'll take a look at some other action out there some analyst upgrades uh, i am seeing one bank getting a little bit of a lift this morning based on an agreement with signature bridge bank so stick around for that that's nycb we got a lot to talk about and of course it's market structure mondays let's get it started it's pre-market prep Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I'm Ben the Penny. I'd buy that stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. All right. Good morning, traders and investors. Well, we're down a point and a half at uh, 45 even, or that's down two points. It's not really representative of the overnight range, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the buck continues to be under pressure. Third down day in a row, down 14 cents at 103.22. Uh, the bonds trying to bust out to the upside. The 30-year trading up 230 seconds at 132 and 25 30 seconds. Crude finding a home in the 60, 60 handle down 75 cents at 66.18. Gold was over 2K, now back under, still up 1410 at 18, 7, 18, 1987, 60. Silver in the green by 12 cents at 22.58 and a half. And Bitcoin moving its way up into the upper. 28 handle up $1,420 at $28,425 triple D. I know you've been observing the overnight action in the pre-market action. And here we are coming off a of quad witch expiration. And we're basically unchanged on the session. Overnight. And I mean, this market just doesn't know what to do with some of the new information that's getting in. You know, we had this ridiculous rally last night. And I rarely tweet out a call like that. But when we were trading up last night, I'm like, I think we go red here by the morning, which is exactly what we've done here. So predictable that we'd fade it because I just don't see that Credit Swiss as good news. I mean, the market applauded it. Okay. Yeah. We're rescuing Credit Swiss. But then when you really analyze it, yeah, take under. Like, how bad is the situation? that Credit Suisse has to accept an offer like that, that they have to bypass shareholders. I mean, everything that's going on there is just telling you how dire the situation really was at Credit Suisse. And what does that mean over here? And you look at FRC this morning, it's down another four bucks. I think there's just so many problems in the banking area right now. It's hard to get a sustained bid. Again, the flight to tech might happen, but what this is really equaling is chop because the market doesn't know how to digest the CS news. All right, Money Mitch, how was your weekend? Well, my weekend involved a lot of World Baseball Classic watching and not watching of the banks. But that doesn't mean that we won't get back to the banks, right? And I hope that you guys enjoyed a little March Madness because we're definitely in madness. Uh, well, I, I didn't really do a bracket this year, no. Dennis. I, I'm more into baseball, so I've been watching baseball. I'll, I'll yeah. be honest. Uh, I know that everyone's been watching college basketball, but hey. To each his own. As long as you get some sports in, in my eyes, you can get away from these markets for a little bit. But let's get back to real the quick though. I, at, yeah. at like eleven forty on Thursday, I couldn't resist Triple D. I had to get some brackets in. You there. had to do it. I uh, had to do it. The truth I had comes to make out. the donation. And uh, mm, I'll give you the good news and the bad news. The bad okay. news is I put a little too much faith in Purdue. Oh no. So now I call them Purdue Do. Purdue Do. <laughs> okay. So they knocked that I got crushed on a couple brackets. But um 
I decided, you know, I pick other teams, and so I went with Gonzaga. Gonzaga, the Zags. I don't know why. And uh, so after the first round, they pay out like three percent of the uh, the purse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there has to be one winner, right? Out of two hundred and sixty people, I was tied for first. So there Boy. was no payout after the first round. So my Gonzaga pool is still alive. Uh, but uh, Purdue, man, what a you know, a one versus a sixteen loss. Did you know that, Dennis? Yeah, right so, off yeah, the hop. Yeah, for the second time. Yeah, that, so. that that'll break a few brackets you, right there. You know what? Yeah. I, I was working on my jump man this weekend, though. Did you guys see my jump man? No. Is this look, you? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Is, Is this, this you? you? Look at them hops. No. Oh, get That's it, boy. Not. Get it. That's Is that Mitch you? right there. Look at that in slow mo. Come on. Are you yes, serious? Let's go. He's lying. Come on, guys. Is that you? This guy can dunk. This guy's 5'9 and can dunk. Let's go. Yeah, we Holy can't crap. Fake. It's I, Mitch I, Jumpman. Let's I don't go. Even know what to say. That's incredible. If that really was you. I don't totally believe it. But yeah, it was. You can look it up. <laughs> don't worry. The CGI these days are really good. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, that's his debt. <laughs> <laughs> the CGI money, Mitch. Okay. All right. Let's get to the markets. Let's talk about the banks. Of course, emergency weekend meetings. The Swiss authorities orchestrated a deal for UBS to buy the rival bank, Credit Suisse, for $3.2 billion. Of course, this is a fraction of Friday's price that was already hammered down um it looks like it was at around eight billion before this on friday now a 3.2 billion price tag coming in here this reported by reuters what do you guys think about this deal first and then we can get into how it'll affect the rest of the banking well one we just talked a little bit off the hop about it and it obviously was a dire situation here at credit swiss i mean we all knew it wasn't a good situation but i don't think we knew that it was this dire that they would actually burn shareholders burn bondholders just to try to save you know the the bank and i mean this is an eye-opener especially over in europe but even over here as well uh, it's funny, you know, in Europe, they're blaming the U.S., you know, situation for, you know, the for the Credit Swiss tipping point here, basically, which obviously Credit Swiss has been in trouble for a long, long time. So I find that a, a little bit uh, not, you know, I find that a little bit not the reason here. But in any regard, when you get a take under, it's an eye opener for the market. I mean, we had rumors of this Friday night and Credit Swiss started popping up on it because they're like, oh, Credit Swiss is going to get bought. And then you see the price, and originally they're offering 25 Swiss francs or whatever for it, like 0.25. Then they came up a little bit here, but it is a really scary situation when you start getting take unders, and it's reminiscent of the financial crisis when Bear Stearns was getting bought for two dollars. Joel, you can remember, closed that day at 29. Then they were getting bought out for two on the Monday morning, and you're like, what just happened? They eventually raised it to 10. But I mean, this is the situation that we're in here. The banking crisis is fully on. And, you know, we're not out of the woods by any means. Tech stocks helping, obviously, with some nice rallies here. S&Ps rallying, you know, early Friday morning. Q's rallying early Friday morning. Q's have held up very well with the flight to tech. But at a certain point in time, you just got to say, you know, if the banks are going to continue to go down like they are. And, I mean, Bank of America is trying to make new lows here today. JP Morgan, which is probably best of breed, breaking down. It's hard to see the scenario where techs continues to hold up that's why on friday i was like you're in these techs i kind of feel like it's time to ring the register here it's been a nice run in microsoft it's been a nice run in nvidia it's been a nice run in this flight to tech which was somewhat predictable but i don't think it's got the continuation unless you know the banking crisis just magically goes away and i think the only way it magically goes away is if they cut rates so i don't think that's happening anytime soon um it's about time a european bank went under I mean, how, you know, or got it took. We've been talking about Credit Suisse having problems for the better part of a decade, I feel like, Joel. So this is not new, you know, and to anyone that's, you know, just beginning in the markets like, oh, Credit Suisse. I mean, this has been talked about for a very, very, very long time. So it's hard to just all of a sudden say, yeah, it's us. You know, this is, you know, the tipping point here. I'm getting Mm -hmm. trades as I'm getting lost. How about about the whole... um... How about the whole Greek? Remember the Greek banks? Well, all of them, Joel. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. about DB? I'm worried about something coming out of DB. I mean, we you got to worry about some... all of them. You got to worry about, okay, let's just stop for a second. You got to worry right now about every single 
bank in the world and it sucks. And, yeah. and, and, and that's just the situation that we're in here right now. When you see JP Morgan starting to break down, which is what is happening, it's an eye opener for the market. I mean, Bank America, yeah. Citigroup, yeah, they've had some rough roads, but JP Morgan's starting to roll over here too. So I think you just got to be really careful with just saying, yeah, these banks are eventually coming back. And there was rumors over the weekend that Warren was going to the White House and he was going to get down and dirty in some of these regionals. And I know you've been saying the same thing too, Joel. And that would be a huge vote of confidence. And maybe that's what it needs. And that's all the banks really need is a vote of confidence here. And they don't have it right now. People are nervous. People are concerned. People are scared for their money. They're in FRC. You know, they're, they're scared to a certain extent. Not just in the stock, but they're scared um, at the banks. So... I mean, you know, we're not seeing bank runs here yet, but it doesn't mean that everybody isn't thinking about it either. So there's a lot of things to worry about, and it makes it very difficult to just say, okay, yeah, let's go buy the S&P at 1920 times earnings here when it wasn't cheap in the first place. The wild card still is that the Fed could lower rates, and and then all of a sudden, you know, tech stock's probably off to the races. So I still think that's why you got this flight to tech. I also wanted to bring in, what do you guys think about the impact on wider bank funding markets over the decision to wipe out Credit Suisse junior bondholders, even as equity investors mess. to gain from the UBS deal? I mean, it's a mess, Mitch. I mean, when you're coming in, that just shows how dire the situation really was. They're talking about like bypassing shareholder votes, changing laws yeah. so shareholders can't vote on this. I mean, I, that's, you know, all of a sudden free market capitalism just died right there in, in this in this bank here. So, I mean, you know, the shareholders who own the company have no vote on this. That's how dire the situation is. And that is an eye opener for this market. And that's why when they were rallying up 30, 40 handles last night, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? And obviously we've given it back. So I, I, I don't know if we, if we just go straight down from here. I think we just chop around as we get new information in. But if we get more worries on our own banks on these regional banks the market is going to eventually start to you know start to go down with it too it just tech can't hold up if there's a banking crisis and obviously we're early in early innings and maybe it's not going to materialize maybe we're, we're, we're maybe we're two and done you know with signature and signature is now you know going to get you know some uh, one of the other banks coming and buying some of the assets maybe maybe we're you know two and done here and that's it but you just look at the trading action and the FRC I'm, I'm going to take. I'm just going to take. I, 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 let's take. Let, let's take off the bank goggles, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's take off the the tech goggles, okay? And let's just look at what the market did last week, okay? Look right. at the where we made the low. We made the low, and I'm I'm just trying to be positive here. I'm just pointing I, out. I, the I technical. like the positivity. There's okay, no, there's no problem. So we're, we're we, with you, Joe. We we came we came down. I mean, it just looked like we had to go down and test thirty eight hundred in the S and P's, right? Or mm -hmm. basis the uh, we rolled over the contract. So thirty. Look, we were just coming down here, and we did. We came down. It was actually more the thirty eight fifty area. We kissed it, and we bounced. Okay, we bounced. I don't know why we got over four thousand on Friday. Maybe the quad witch tech. expert. Yep, tech. All right. And now we're just holding our breath. And I, um, I talked to Dennis about Friday's low yesterday. You know, uh, when we were texting yesterday, I said if we take out Friday's low, there's a lot of air. Well, there was a lot of air, and we almost went to Friday's low, but then we came right back. So I think this is a very important day for the market. You know, if we could just, and I'm not talking about going up to 300 points. I'm just, if we could mm -hmm. just hold in here. Make people doubt, um, you know, with all this bad stuff going on, the S&P was up 40 handles last week. Very Maybe impressive. I, yeah, yeah, very impressive. Now, the, the Bears, I mean, they got all the fodder, man, that they want, man. They got banks going down. They they just, they got it, man. Yeah. If they're going to crush this market, which they tried to do overnight and very well could do over during the regular session, mm -hmm. this is it, man. This is the most, if you're a bear, and you want to crush this market. And you're talking about 3,500 and 3,200 and 3,000. This is it, man. This is it. This is where you did you have to get the market. So I'm, uh, I, I'm trying to remain, you know, calm and look at the market both ways. But, you know, each day the market gives you new information. And you're going to get a lot of information today. Go ahead, Mitch. I'm sorry. No, I, I kind of agree with that outlook, Joe. I can't even blame you for having somewhat of a positive outlook in this because 
we've had this whole banking situation happen. And really, how much have we gone down on the spot? Not much. Resilient. Not much. Very resilient. Right? You would think that we'd be down to those like lows, right? You would think that we'd be down. If I told you all this situation before and you couldn't look at the market, right? Yeah. You would probably think we'd be down there by that 360 yeah. near breaking lows. But this market seems like it doesn't want to come back into the bearish channel. And this also leaves room for a throwback push back up towards 400. I know that sounds crazy, but if this banking situation can shore up, I think this market can start actually getting bullish. I know that might sound crazy, but I really do it's think and it's hard for me to, you guys know me, I'm more leaning always on the bear side. Even I'm starting to shift because why? The Fed situation. Yes. I think that's the situation we need to ask ourselves. So the question for today also, will the Fed stop raising rates and maybe yeah, pivot yeah. by mid-year? Oh, not, not pivot by mid-year, pivot much sooner here. It this is happen, why yeah. they, again, as we get more information, it's impossible. It's 100% impossible to predict this market right now. 100%. Mm -hmm. We can do it overnight. Definitely. Like day trading, like I said, it's been a fantastic month for me. One of my best months day trading in a long, long time. And, you know, I'm just making little calls. I'm like, okay, I thought the market rally last night was stupid. So, you know, you, you take advantage of that. Now the market comes in here and you're covering back in. I mean, there's different opportunities for the market here. And, and for day traders, I think it's a fabulous market for day traders. But if you're a long-term investor and you're saying this is where we're going to be six months from now, you're throwing darts because we have too much more information that's going to come at us. It's one or the other. We're going to get more banking failures and that is eventually going to bring the market down or we're not going to get any more banking failures and the Fed pivot comes sooner to Mitch's point and that's a green light for tech stocks so there are two clear paths here but the path to stay here we could just chop around too there's a path to just chop around as we continue to get more information and the battle between the bulls and the bears rages on but you know listening to people with crystal balls looking at charts and saying yeah this is where we're going because this is what the technicals say the technicals are completely taking a back seat here i'm sorry there's, I this, think, the market yeah. is not trading technical. Oh, this market is trading on new information continuously. Again, technicals are awesome. Technicals will tell you where maybe a stock is going after the news. But when you get new information into the market, you have to be able to process that as well. Technicals are one tool in your toolbox. But just, just take a technician and say, oh, we were oversold. We were due to bounce. Mm -hmm. It's all information right now. You know, the yes. bounce overnight was because of Credit Suisse. But then they think about it, which I'm trying to always think about it too. And it's like, is this really good news? And that's where the market is right now. They're trying to decide, is it really good news? But just to trade just technically, really difficult when you have so much new information coming in. My thing there, Dennis, though, is not necessarily like to trade off of that, but more the reaction from traders from looking at the technical charts. So if we were to shore up the fears I think they would look at the charts technically and they would view this as very bullish, just thinking on that outlook. Of course, we have to shore up the uncertainty first, but if we could do that and you just look at the market and you just look at the charts, the charts are still pointing bullish. Just saying that. I think I, I, don't, I don't, it depends I don't what chart bullish. you look at too, yeah. Mitch. Look at IWM. I, I mean, How do you say IWM looks bullish? That's I'm looking. I'm looking market. at the spy. It's not I, I'm spy. talking about spy, but I no, can go no, to the stop. IWM. Stop. IWM is the overall market. Let's be All honest right. here. Spy is heavy tech weighted. The reason mm -hmm. spy has held up is because we had a flight into Nvidia's and Microsoft's and Apple's holding up really well. That's the reason spy is holding up. But take a look at IWM, and you tell me, does that look healthy? It looks like a bloody head and shoulders to me, and it looks like it's ready to take out the it's one. It's on support, man. So you get a completely different support. viewpoint from the technicals. I'm just showing you. It depends on which picture you look at to say that this market is technically setting up bullish. I think is too much blinders and S and P looking on. Because there it's are hold, many it's other things support. happening here. You can say it's holding support for now. Um, what I think, and I think the reason you're in. in like that's the reason I don't know what's going to happen today or before the Fed, but I I think what 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 investors, long term investors, institutional investors are worried about, if they're not if uh, when the Fed comes out, they go a quarter, but they say we're gonna we're gonna hold off, we're gonna hold off a little bit. I think then they're the, gonna do that, and then the market's gonna is gonna rip your face off. But it's is gonna, it Joel? 
Because that's what you just think. And yes, probably on that initial headline that the Fed, and there's rumors that they're going to pause. I mean, there yeah, is rumors coming multiple that. weekend, multiple no. from this weekend, that they're going to pause and not even go the quarter. No, they don't. So I think panic. they go the quarter. And I, th- I think exactly what you just said. I think they go the quarter and then they, then they have commentary that they're pausing for now. And I do think tech stocks will rip higher on that. But then you got to analyze, like, why are they really doing that? And it doesn't, if, if all of a sudden they just pause, but then we start getting more bank failures, and that trumps everything. Right now, the banking situation, unfortunately, yeah. trumps all. That is the problem for the overall market. It's why the IWM is sitting on the lows, because the banking situation trumps all. So I think you've just got to be very cautious. I'm not saying we're tanking. I'm not saying we're ripping. I'm saying I don't know, because I don't have enough information, because I don't know if there's going to be more bank failures. But I'm not coming in this market. Guns blazing here. As a day trader, sure. You know, we had a good trade in tech last week. It was really good. But now it's come up. I mean, now that, you know, we got Microsoft approaching 52-week high. Crazy. I mean, do I want to buy stocks trading at 52-week highs? Now the thing run twenty twenty two dollars crazy we talked about three week. days ago. I mean, a good call, Dennis. I'll give myself a pat on the back. Jeremy <laughs> Newsom says he can do that. But I mean, 22 points here in three days, it's a little bit too, like ring the register. We're in a trading market. And you know that too, Mitch. You've been saying the same exact thing. You get up three, four, five percent in this market. You take those gains because they come back. They don't go straight up. Take it and run market. What about what let's just you know? All right, I, let's just look at the banks real quick. J.P. Morgan traded down thirty-two cents. You know, up and down, up and down. That chart doesn't look great. Made a new lower the move yesterday, and you certainly don't have to. You know, you know, I I hate areas like this where you get in the areas of limited support. So. You know, J.P. Morgan, you know, kind of on the brink here. Uh, Bank America, this is just a line in the sand here. You have uh, a pair of lows in the same area, 27.62, 27.69. I mean, there's your support in that. Um, you have uh, this one, which uh, in my uh, in my uh, little spree of buying uh, banks, I bought some bad ones, but I did buy this one, New York Community Bank. Is trading up. That stock looks okay. There's I nibbled a it. Look okay yep. Today. Yep. Uh, Comerica, you know, I nibbled it a little bit of that. Uh, you know, Key, um, nibbled it a little bit of I that. I sold my Key. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I, I want, it's one of these things where, yeah, you're, you're incurring losses and, and I don't know. I think maybe overall, except for the FRC, I, you know, probably flatted it down a little bit, but it's just one of those things where, man, if, I just would like to try and hold on for a year. And that's what I plan on doing. I, I'm going to try and, you know, and if I lose all the money that yeah. I put into these banks, it was, you know, very, very small percentage over. I'm just, But I just don't want to, you know, panic out. Maybe it's the right thing to do. But, man, I remember during the financial crisis of 2008, man, there's some stuff I bought. And I bought some so Morgan Stanley. Yeah, I bought some Morgan Stanley Preferreds. They were yielding like 18% when the stock was at like 20. I saw the stock go to five bucks. Yeah. And I like, oh my gosh, I just made the biggest mistake in the world. Yeah. And then I had those things forever and ever and ever until they called them in. So I bought those HSBC preferreds during the financial crisis and I loaded up pretty good. And I was just like, this is going to be a zero or it's going to be worth a lot of money. And and I and actually, I was kind of not even, I, I paired it. So I shorted the common against the preferred. I remember that. Yep. And it was one of the best trades of my life. Um, I bought, I think the HSBC preferreds at like five bucks, same thing, on their 25 par. It was yielding 42% match. It was yielding mm-hmm. 42%, just to give you a perspective of how ugly the financial crisis was. And then yeah. I'm like, I shorted the common against it. So I'm like, if it goes to zero... I should be in better shape because I'm long the preferred and short the common, and maybe there'll be something left over. And if it goes all the way back up, well, the preferred was down more than the common, which just felt stupid. Yeah. So I did that, and eventually I got out of my short because of the, we started to stabilize and come up a few months later, and then I just held on to those HSBC preferreds, and some of them I got they got all the way back to par years later. So and I, you know, and I, and I made a ton of money on them. It was like basically you know one of one of my best longer term trades I've ever done, if not the mm-hmm. best. So there is, to Joel's point, some fantastic opportunities in this, but you don't want to be early. Um, people were doing the same thing, you know, buying Lehman Brothers or buying Bear Stearns, and those did not work out. Citigroup did not work out. People keep looking back. Well, look, you would have bought Citigroup back in 2008. You'd make all this money. Show the chart of Citigroup because those people don't know about stocks reverse splits. 
because Citigroup at $44 here, go back to 2007, 2008. If you picked the wrong one, you picked JP Morgan, you did well. You picked a couple of these other ones like a Goldman or a Morgan, you probably did well. If you picked Citigroup, oh, oh, what do you mean? It's not, it went from $2 to $44. No, no, sorry. There was a reverse split in there. $550 to $44, so it did not work out. Bring up the chart of AIG. So I hear about this one too. Oh, oh we don't even you talk just buy about these it. things back in the financial crisis, you kill it. People don't know what they're talking about. Look at AIG, fourteen hundred dollars. Here we are. Oh, 15 years later, it's forty seven. It's consolidating. Bucks. It's consolidating. <laughs> <laughs> resistance is resistance. I, I can't. I don't, don't, I don't know. There, there will support, be some support. of these. So coming out of this regional bank crisis, we'll call it. There will be yeah. some of these AIG charts, and there will be some Morgan Stanleys that come all the way back. I don't know which yeah. ones are which. So you just I have a good question about that. Just go in all in because right. the people who say they made a lot of money back there buying some, sure, some people did, but some people didn't. So I, have a, I have a good question about that. And I brought this up on Twitter because I thought it was very important. I think I saw multiple people retweet this one. So I wanted to bring in the question uh, Steve Grasso put out there. I'm still long FRC, the quick profit idea, buying it yesterday and selling it today didn't work out, made money in key earlier this week. I'm okay with the risk and the downside. If we decide to go home long with FRC, you shouldn't go long FRC if you aren't okay with the outsized risk. Now I put, we hit the meme stock traders for their outlook on risk to reward, but isn't this very similar risk to reward? I, I think it's bad if you're coming in FRC for a day trade. I love Grasso by the way, but I think it's bad if you're coming in for a day trade and then you all of a sudden take it home because you couldn't get out for the point. Now you're down five points. So you just got to be protecting yourself to a certain extent on these. If Joel's coming in FRC and saying it's a zero or it's a 120, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I, would think, say, that, I, 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 I think that's yeah, fine. I, yeah, I don't think, I think that's a, a Isn't fine. This similar, if you want to come in and buy FRC at 18, don't be selling it at 19 because your risk reward is just not there. You can't like, and again, if you're just day trading, make sure you cut out. You can do it. You can go 18 and a half. But as an investor, don't let the trade become an investment here. That's what I'll just say. Don't let the trade become an investment because that can happen on all of these things right now. We're in a very dangerous time. Day trade stuff, it's fun, but just be careful. You got to have a tight leash. Again, I use the relationships, you know, kind of feeling it. How are we feeling today? To your point, Joel, the regionals are holding up very well today. We have FRC down with the carry is trading up. You got PACW. I think that's on the Warren rumors. I still have a little piece of the PACW. It's the only one I kept. Um, I kept a little piece of it. Um, there's the rumors, you know, that Warren's going to come in, and somebody had mentioned it might be PACW. But again, these are rumors. It's I'm, too you know, much. Don't... Like you made a uh, when we were going back and forth texting, you said, you know, it's just not his trade, you know, that uh, as far as like risk goes. But uh, what I was hoping was that Warren was going to be in his bathtub. Drinking a diet coke <laughs> and saying just just buy all the regionals, buy all the regionals, but that didn't happen over the well. It might, like, it might be happening. It, it we can't, still. we don't know. Yeah. Again, we again we see Oxy that he bought Oxy because he's twenty percent ownership, and that's got to get disclosed what within three days. On um, if he's taking a new position, these regionals, and he's under ten percent, you might not find out for forty five days. Uh, exactly, so, you pointed that out to me. Yep. So, so yep. you could he could be already in some of these regionals. It could be the case. It also could be he likes the sweetheart deal, so he's probably working out getting some special deals. You know, <laughs> yeah. like he's getting the preferreds, and he's getting you know again. Remember, sometimes preferreds are better than commons when you get into these situations. A lot of the preferreds, that's why your Morgan Stanley preferreds, my HSBC preferreds, a lot of the preferreds do eventually come back if the, actually, if the underlying institution does not go under. But in, a, in the event of like a takeover or a take under, a lot of times now in this Credit Suisse, it's a different situation, but a lot of times those preferreds will come back to par because those preferreds become the under the issue of the new bank. They just switch over. So, you know, there is opportunities. I think the preferred, if I was doing the longer term investing, might be the better way to go. FRC is a pile of preferreds out there. So you can look at that. I'm looking at FRC.PRH though. Nine bucks on the 25. FRC is down 80, 90%. FRC.PRH is only down 30 or down, you know, 50%. It's down, but or 60%. But I'd like it better at two or three or five as opposed to nine. And then, let's, you know, uh, let's, uh, do trace, pins. let's do a, uh, a stock. 
because we're starting to sound like Wall Street. I was going to wrap up the bank. Let's wrap up the banks. Okay. 30 minutes so of bank talk. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here with – we'll do two stocks that are uh, some of the top gainers for me on my pre-market list here, NYCB and PacW, right, Pac West Bank. So, yeah. of course, Pacific Western addressed uh, liquidity concerns with $10.8 billion in available cash. Um, so they put that comment out over, over the weekend. You can see they're definitely reacting up on that. And just to state the other news here, um, this is more the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation saying that uh, subsidy New York Community Bank Corp has entered into a purchase and assumption agreement to buy deposits and certain loan portfolios from Signature Bridge Bank. Yeah, so we'll, fin we'll finish up the bank's the, talk. With the vultures are coming in. Right, right, right. And uh, uh, Keith uh, Brett and Woods, who is one of the uh, top analysts in banking on Wall Street, uh, came in with an upgrade, too. So that's helping it. I mean, you know, it's a pop. We'll see what happens. That actually did make it slow uh, on Monday. But uh, what about Pin Duo Duo? Holy mackerel. That thing's getting tan man. bad day to report right we talk about this all the time the day that you pick to report is so important and in this case it's not like they had a choice q4 eps a dollar 21 in line sales at 5.77 billion missed the 5.95 billion estimate and you guys see it taking a beating there in the pre-market i got nervous and i sold my jd and bob i bought them for trades because i was like oh stop oh but then i heard she was meeting going with Putin over, there, over the yeah. weekend and i'm like i'm not i'm not i'm not like even going there so <laughs> yeah. i i made like, like i made like a nickel on bob i think at the end of it jd i lost like 40 or 50 cents or something but i had those on i kind of thought oh they're consolidating maybe we could you know it's hard there's just too many unknowns and i don't like this is a whole other can of worms here joel this is not good. The cheese going over there. I body, know. Body with, I know. With I Russia saw, and Putin. And Putin's Dude. talking like, "Oh yeah, my good friend Xi." And I'm like, "Holy!" He needs weapons, man. He needs weapons. Yeah, I mean, the division of the world happened. I know. I hey, know. We're worrying about banking crisis. Also, North Korea isn't looking friendly either. No, no saw what happened there. Well, they're going to go all together. You can see what's happening. They're all grouping together. North Korea, China, and Russia. Yeah, all I know. In. I know. It feels like there's just you know the East versus West is getting worse, and that's not. <laughs> that's Nobody's not good. I know that, that is we not even talk good. about that for no, 35 no, minutes. Please. I know, I know. Can't I talk know. about that one right now. Joel's <laughs> about to be sell everything and retire, man. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna spook Joel out of the market here right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I can't touch any China stocks with this happening. Joel, you yeah. better not be looking at that long term portfolio. Yeah, today. Dennis, I am blaming <laughs> you because now I actually look at one of my long term portfolios. And I'm you, see, I, you see what happened? Was, you need to be careful. Out it there. was pretty, it was such a tame little thing now. And now I'm like, holy sh what did I you know now I, I took it off my I took FRC off my screen. I just whatever. I got I can't me looking at it is not gonna affect oh, yeah. you trade out of it when you look at it. That's yeah. my problem is I look at all this crap and I do trade <laughs> out of it. They're hard to hold right now. Hard to hold stuff. And maybe we'll be happy. Maybe you're gonna be happy with that FRC. I think your FRC is a zero. Or I think it's eventually a hundred bucks. So yeah. that's pretty good risk. It's five to one risk reward here, but I'm I'm kind of thinking the zero is more likely. So this is why if I'm not. If you could just stay it. above zero until I pass it on to Emily and Dana, that would Maybe be it's great. A, no, well, it doesn't have to necessarily go to zero, even if they're bankrupt. It could go to a buck, but. <laughs> It's I, like, I, I want to sneak one more in here before we get Tim on. It's already Tim time. Let's just do Foot Locker so we're all done. And from there, we can do a little ticker time at the sure. end. Let's do Foot Locker here. EPS, 97 cents beat. The 51 cent estimate, big beat on EPS. Sales, 2.33 billion beat the 2.15 billion estimate. But where it starts getting ugly is the outlook and guidance looking forward for fiscal year 23 adjusted EPS to $3.65 on the high end versus a four dollars and forty eight cent estimate. So I've been looking for shorts and Dennis, watch your offers here. I don't know what's going on, but uh we're starting to rip cancel here. all. Yeah, cancel we're offers. Pushing a little bit. Just cancel all. That's what you do when you're in trouble. Exactly. HFT off. That's why you have a button that <laughs> can do all. that, right? <laughs> Sorry about that, Mitch. Uh, no, it's okay. Hop didn't button, even get picked off on anything, I don't think that time. I can't blame you for that, but yeah, Mercury Foot Locker up like, sold, sold, started sold. to I'm get like, hit. Oh my gosh, these algos just pick me. That pick me. Up. Are we, are we going to start seeing these consumer stocks start thinking about recession on on the corner, right? Like recession coming, and then we start getting hit more and more. I wonder if that's why the outlook of Foot Locker is so bad moving forward. 
But again, the response to the stock is not is, bad. People are I know. expecting. And I'm like, this is, is a gift today, I almost feel like. I'm looking but, at Foot Locker. But here is the situation <laughs> is that the, everybody is very nervous about a lot of things. So the climbing the wall yeah. of worry can happen on some of these stocks. And yes, valuations have been punished on a lot of these stocks to pretty extreme levels. So, I mean, look at Kohl's, and I still have that. I mean, Kohl's is 23 bucks now. <laughs> I mean, the dividend, which is probably going to get cut on me, is 8.58%. It's probably not safe. Um, but I mean, the risk reward on some of this stuff, if we're not end of the world here with nuclear or with banks or with whatever it is, there is some opportunities potentially here. So I think Let me talk foot locker real go quick. Talk foot I know locker. We got Tim, uh, what a logical area for this to stop. Yeah. Uh, the 4450 area, you had one, two, three highs right in that area. So uh, to me, not surprised that it came back down to that area. For the top of yesterday's range, if you're looking for a gap fill, 42.83. And then, Dennis, I just before we get to Tim, I hear there's a new algo out there, okay? Mm. And it's when you are, like, in a full rant and you're probably not paying attention to the – they're like – they go, oh, Dennis is probably sleeping now. And they yeah, move the stools like – Seven points. Like, bing, 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 pick bing. off Dennis. He's in the tangent right now. He won't even the Dennis <laughs> rant run. All his orders. Forget the bank run. We got the Dennis Dick run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they nail me. Well, I know what we do have. We got Market Structure Monday. All right, let's get to it here. Tim Quas, what happened? We were waiting for option expiration. Did we get a turn, Tim? I don't know, but I want to know what the name of that algo is. That, uh, <laughs> that is picks me off all the time. Right. That's hammering Dennis. I think it's Citadel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, before well, you get uh, you. deep into the woods here, uh, uh, one of mm -hmm. uh, my son-in-law's friends listens to the show consistently, and uh, he loved our little Marlboro Man segment uh, last <laughs> week. <laughs> the Cowboy I Killers. Should, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> the I Cowboy should, Killers. I should... I should come on with a mustache <laughs> and a, a 500 gallon hat. <laughs> big, big hat. <laughs> well, All right, uh, Tim. so Mitch, to answer your question, yeah. <clears throat> we're only halfway through, uh, you know, there's, there's the expirations period and then there's the renewal. And I, and I, you know, I always tell folks that you, you have to take into account all of those things. So what we're halfway through um, aside from uh, apparent uh, an apparent you know banking crisis, what we're halfway through is the the March options expirations and then the renewal of the April series. So it, Thursday index options uh, expired, AM dated index options. Friday was a you know there are all kinds of things going on. Six thousand plus uh, weekly and quarterly options expired. Uh, S and P indexes rebalanced. Then today are new options, you know, the whole new series trades. And then Tuesday is what we call counterparty Tuesday. That's when, so the banks, you know, who are generally going to, going to make markets in these things will square the books. And then Wednesday, as Jay Powell announces whatever he's going to announce, uh, the volatility as an asset class expires. We think of it as VIX expirations, but it's, you know, it's a lot more than that. So really Thursday is when we get a read on the condition of the market. That's really it. All, everything in between will have some very short-term self-interest in the form of derivatives. You know, are there people buying them, selling them? Are you buying or selling volatility? Do you have exposure? Are you hedged? All that stuff has to sort out. And, I, you know, it can be very difficult to trade well during those times because you don't know what's going to happen. And you can only see half of it. Remember, the, the options market, half of it's over the counter. So you can see the exchange traded components of it, but it doesn't really give you a full read. So traders, you're, you know, you, that's why it's very important. If, you know, if you're if you're if you are not if you're risk intolerant, you should be aware of this. If you have trouble sleeping because of what your trading positions are doing, you should look at the options expirations calendar. You can go to the options clearing corp and see it. We, ha we have it too. Uh, if you go to marketstructureedge.com and you look under resources, you'll see the expirations calendar, but that's something to keep in mind. If you have a difficult time, just skip it. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, as we talk about all the time on this show, it doesn't matter what you pay for something. 
It's, it's whether you can sell it for a better price. And it doesn't really matter when. We're all going to own the same things. And so you have to be aware that when you buy and sell things is very important. I was looking at this data over the weekend. which That's what I do. You know, I sit around studying data. But if you look at the... On the, the slopes. <laughs> I it's smoking true. a Marlboro <laughs> on the slope I, with his laptop I, looking at data. He's, a, I, he's the guy like in the chair lift that like puts his smoke out, you know, on his, did, like his hand. I did have a 20, 20 minute phone conversation at, at the top of Mount Warner on Friday, Friday morning as I was skiing. I skied 17,000 vertical feet on Friday, but I was up at 10,600 feet, and uh, that's a pretty good spot to 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 uh conduct your affairs i mean it's amazing that's that's where <laughs> that's where all the business happens right, <laughs> right. um now right. of course so, we're, yes. we're we're halfway through this stretch here yeah. um we've lost two major banks there's yep. uncertainty pretty much everywhere in the world yep. what's next tim well let's look at the data and, and just to finish that data thought this is an important thing for folks to know too i think there are 30 what i was looking at was the is the the construction of the Wilshire 5000 index. And the reason I do is because it's the, it's the, it's supposedly the most complete market index. And there are 3,525 components in it. So that, that's how many public companies there are. What's fascinating is this, that, that, that 1,700 of them, half of them are micro caps that are, that are, Less than 1% of market cap. They're like 50 basis points of market cap in 1,700 stocks. So 95, close to 95% of market cap is in less than 800 stocks. There are, call it 480 large caps, roughly the same, two, two, 290 mid caps. Those are the ones that everybody owns. All of the money is concentrated into this small set of stocks. The largest single asset class on the planet now is what's called passive large cap blend. That is large cap value and growth. That's where all the money is. And it's a great lead in, Mitch, to your question about the, the banks because there is concentration risk. Out, coming out of 2008, we have, we have significantly fewer banks and more concentration than we had before. It was interesting. I was listening to the... Uh, the former CEO of Barclays. Barclays bought Lehman, you'll remember. And he said, you know, that was a good deal. We made $10 billion in returns the first year owning Lehman. And the crisis in 2008 was related to commercial real estate and residential real estate. It was real estate focused. Um, and so and he said, the four largest banks in the United States have 60% of all deposits. So that's very interesting. There is concentration. Uh, that was the problem for Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, there, you know, there was there was a concentration of deposits there. Here's the thing: if I, you know, as we get to data and what to expect, what do the data tell us? Because that's the only thing you can go to. To me, if because the market will tell you what everybody thinks. The beautiful thing about the stock market is it is a it is a mechanism that reflects every motivation: fear, greed, algorithms, human thought, asset allocation, stock picking, hedging. It's all in there. And so you can look at the supply demand balance and see what everybody's thinking. Which way is it tipping? Uh, but the, here's the thing to me. That what, is, what this crisis is, is about is it's not real estate. This crisis is about our debt. This is about our debt as countries and governments. Realize that tier one capital, which basically... All banks have to carry the Basel Accords. There are three different versions of what are called the Basel Accords. Switzerland. Switzerland is the, the, you know, the author of banking. It began there. The, the Medici's made it great in Italy, but it came out of Switzerland. Switzerland is known for banking. And uh, the, the Basel Accords require banks to carry tier, tier one capital. Our own Dodd-Frank legislation in the United States and, and Dennis in Canada, there's something very similar. The banks have to carry our debt. What is called safe assets is U.S. debt. Really, it's government securities and mortgage-backed securities. And everybody owns it. Silicon Valley Bank owned the very same mix of assets that the Federal Reserve does. But the Federal Reserve is, le is leveraged 200 to 1. Silicon Valley Bank was maybe 20. 
like a tenth of the leverage. And so what is really coming due for us is our overspending as a people. So I don't know where it's going to go, but let's look at the data. because That's a bigger problem, though. Like you're opening a whole can of worms here, and it is the overspending of everything. Governments, people, consumption, you know, not saving for a rainy day anymore, but spend now because YOLO, you only live once. Yep. I mean, the whole mentality of the world, especially through COVID, has changed here, Tim. Yep. And I mean, eventually, you know, people like Peter Schiff have been calling this to end, you know, for the better part of 20 years here now. Peter Schiff right. wrote a book about it back in 2006. And obviously, 2008, everybody, you know, was feeling a Peter Schiff, you know, figured it all out. But then they ended up just kicking the can further down the road. Does all this eventually come to roost or do we just keep, you know, digging the hole deeper, more debt, print more money eventually? We're going to have a banking crisis. Well, let's throw money at the problem here and the party just continues. Or is there a reckoning debt? Well, I, I, I will use one of my favorite lines, which I've used here on, on Market Structure Monday several times in the past. And it's from Herb Stein, who's the father of Ben Stein, Ben Stein from Ferris Bueller's awesome. Day Off, Love you know, Benson. yeah, anyone, anyone, the teacher, Bueller, right? So, Bueller. right, Bueller, Bueller, exactly. So, Herb Stein said famously, "If something, and he's an economist, if something cannot last forever, it will stop." So, <laughs> it's a funny line, but it's true. Yes, at some point, it will stop. We have been very successful in engineering our capacity to overspend, to spend more than we make. My dad taught me, a, you know, five word. Uh, economic lesson when he sent me off to college, he said, spend less than you make. But that, if you do that, then that is infinitely sustainable. That will, you, nothing need ever stop. But when you, when you spend more than you make, at some point there will be a reckoning. And it has been the history of the world since the United States left the gold standard in 1971, which is a yes. good lead in, right? I mean, that, that's really what it's coming down to. It, it will ultimately be a currency failure. I'm, and I'm not, I don't sit around worrying about this, but I think one should understand what is occurring. If we don't have a yeah, basic- Ben Stein was also the uh, principal on the Wonder Years. He, you're exactly right. And he did a great job there. Uh, okay. By the way, this is Foot Locker. So, you know, so, so <laughs> we fall, went on a little tangent. There. So uh, there's no <laughs> gold in Fort Knox. Right. Is that what you're telling right. me, Tim? I, well, it's really interesting. Yes, because here's <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing is in momentum, they're in, in this momentum portfolio. So, so what we do for edge users, but, and so if you haven't Slugging. seen this, it's the dashboard at Market Structure Edge, platform designed to say, let's take all of those infinite inputs and boil them down to four things that motivate buying and selling. Story. It's only it's less than 10 percent of volume is stock picking. Stock picking. is This is stock picking, by the way. This is out of the Investment Company Institute's fact book. 20, they put out a fact book every every year. And, and if you're a data geek, you should look at it because it tells you the trends. This is stock picking. And this is indexes and ETFs. Which thing is getting owned? Stock picking. So you can't look at the market traders every day and say, well, it's rational thought that's responsible. Rational thought has been in <laughs> steep decline for 15 years. <laughs> it's I like not it. a thing so responsible. It's asset allocation. Okay. Just, you have to get that every, well, I'll have to get that through our heads in momentum. So momentum just looks at the math and says, where's their steep, strong supply demand divergence across the market in liquid stocks. Now, I could look at crypto stocks, but they're not liquid. I have a crypto portfolio, and we could talk about that because the two best performing asset classes currently are Bitcoin and gold. <laughs> so here's momentum. It's got four in it. And the, the lead sector is, is materials. And if you go into it and look at it, say, well, where is their supply demand divergence? Two of the four are gold stocks. That has never happened before that I'm aware of. Uh, and they're very liquid stock. Gold, you know, for trade 46 million shares daily, 30 billion of market cap. AUI is, is another gold stock, uh, Yamana Gold, and uh, trades 34 million shares a day, but only five and a half billion of market cap. So barely into the Russell 1000. But that's very telling. I've, we have, in, in all the years running this data, both ex experimentally and on the platform now for a little over two years, the, that's never happened. So that's telling. What does it tell us? Well, it tells us that there's that this is a serious event. It really is. There, maybe we should we should be aware that there's the there's the possibility that this becomes worse because all of the inputs are saying, well, 
gold and Bitcoin, things that are shelters, supposedly, from storms are the places to be. Note that Intel's in here, too. And Illumina. Illumina's got, you know, an activist battle going on. But those are the four stocks out of the 3,525 stocks comprising the Wilshire 5,000 that show the kind of de supply demand divergence that would be appealing. So it's not very good. Mitch, if we looked at the data, broad market sentiment on a 10 point scale is 3.7. For the market to consistently rise, that number must remain above about five and a half. So clearly that's not very good. If we click through it and look at the supply demand balance in the S&P 500, and the way this works, folks, so demand is an algorithm that takes those four reasons, story, characteristics, I didn't finish them, price and derivatives. Those are the four pursuits in the market. And if you put them all together, you can measure the effect on prices. And if the, if the number is above five, so if it sits between the green line and the red line, that's really good. That's where the market's healthy. Uh, and where is it now? Well, it had this very weak top here and it's falling. Supply is short volume, not short mm -hmm. interest, but short volume, borrowed stock. Well, the market is very dependent on credit, just like bank, the whole planet. And look at this. The supply side is well above trend. It's 51.3% of all trading volume. Weak demand, high supply. What happens to the market? Well, as a general rule, it goes down. And there are things you, you can trade things in this environment. You can trade momentum and you can trade low volatility, but you cannot expect the broad measures to do well unless something changes. There, this is going to have to get stronger and it might. By Thursday, it'll be very important. Will this improve? Will the supply side come down and the demand side pick up? If so, we will have a good uh, March into April. I don't know. We're going to find out. But at present, these are not great data. You could look all across, look at communication services, rising supply, falling demand. Demand's actually bottomed. Consumer discretionary, not very good. Consumer staples, not very good. Look how high the supply side is in all of these. Yeah. So you would, you, would, you would be short the market more than long the market right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's mm. much opportunity, at least from there on the long side. But like always, we got to look deeper into the hood. I'm sure there's different sectors that we didn't get into today. But you guys can check out Market Structure Edge for yourself. You guys want to take a look at this data? Go ahead and check it out. Market Structure Edge. Get your free trial today. And like always, reach out to Tim if you guys want to learn a little bit more on how to use it. Right. You guys see the way that Tim goes about it. If you want to reach out to him he'll definitely go through it and they also have webinars i think every week tim thursday 2 30 p.m eastern time i lead them they're very there you go we got smart users and it, they're very vigorous interactive discussions so come join one hey well like always you guys check out market structure edge we'll have you back on tim always good, good to, to talk you. to you have, have a, a good, good week one. guys thank you thanks tim. all right let's get back to the market how are we looking joel are we leaking we hang no man here? this is uh this is a full out rally we're up 17 and a quarter handles uh mm. boom we're, we're we're two ticks from where we opened last night if you can believe that pre-market high 78 and a quarter that means absolutely nothing to me uh we got some resistance closer to four thousand. High close of the week last week was at 94.50. That's the only thing on the upside. Uh, 09.50, Friday weekly's high. So, man, this this Teflon market, man, it is just shrugging things off. Yeah, it, it's Resilient. impressive. It, that's, it, that's to say again, the least. Again, S&Ps, IWM is definitely the catalyst here today. If you look at IWM, we are really rallying here. The banks, again, if you're really wanting to know what the driver here today is, the banks turned around and all gone green. They were red this morning. They didn't know how to process. Now they've gone green. I think you're in for some choppy. Again, we need more information. No bank failures. Calms down. Maybe, you know, we can start to sustain something here. But I'm still sitting with a lot of cash in the long-term portfolio, fully trading, using margin trading, doing all relationships, hedged trading. Not trying to make market calls here, just edging. Stocks, when it gets up a little too high relative to another one, that's what I'm doing. But for the most part, just looking at news, news trading here too, obviously is still always good money in news trading. But you've got to be very cautious, just saying, yep, this is the turning point. The Fed's pivoting. I'm going all in. We're hitting new all-time highs. We are right. not out of the woods. I think caution still from my long-term investing stance. All right. Let's go to our Trade Zero stocks to watch today.
All right, let's get to this. Uh, first one up here, we're going to take a look at KRTX. It looks like this one had some schizophrenia uh, news that come out. Do you know a little bit more about the situation, Joel? Uh, just uh, good drug news, man. That's all you need to know. Good yeah. drug news. And Any other stock you think could move with this one? <laughs> You're talking about pre-market high, 225 You backed off 14 bucks. Uh, so that's what I'd look at. No idea where to buy it, but uh, keep an eye on that pre-market high. Previous high of the move, that came in at 217.11. If you look at 217.01. Yeah, big move for sure. Let's let's keep going. Let's go to MSTR. Of course, this is moving with Bitcoin yeah. and that kind of move. Of course, we have been seeing uh, Bitcoin kind of rally as of late. Do you think there's some opportunities in some of these Bitcoin plays? I think they've run too far here now. I mean, it was yeah. predictable that Bitcoin would start to get a lift. We have, this is what Bitcoin is built for, the collapse of the banking system. I mean, the crypto guys are running wild here right now, the crypto guys and girls. This mm -hmm. is what they're built for. So, and they've been calling this for a long time and they love seeing these banks collapse. And if Bitcoin wasn't rallying right now, you'd have serious problems. So it's very predictable that Bitcoin is flight. You know, people are worried about the money in the bank I'm putting in Bitcoin. People are worrying, you know, Bitcoin's going to win. These crypto people were right. That's the talk out there right now. And, you know, who's to say they're wrong, I guess, at this point, because we got banks falling down. So I'm, I'm not shorting crypto here, I'll tell you that. Um, I'm not long really any of it, but you know, I'm watching and it's, it's not surprising that it's showing strength in a situation where we're losing banks. Yeah. You get, you're trading up a little bit. I mean, just following Bitcoin, if you're looking just on the dailies and it's hard to just the correlations are, are just so off on this, but two ninety seventy four was your next daily high. Uh, that was back on February 21st. All right, we'll see what happens there in MSTR. ENPH with some news this morning. Looks like Raymond James upgraded it to outperform from market Oof. perform, noting the sell-off in Enphase shares, which are down nearly 31% this year. I've been seeing this start to crack. Uh, full disclosure, I am short First Solar. Um, so started seeing First Solar has been hanging on. But if you take a look at like SEDG in the solar, look at this sell-off in the last couple of days. Definitely started seeing that turnaround. Remember, I was even looking for this to get through 330. Glad I sold it break even on this move on that day because since then, it's just been a hard downturn in Solar Edge. And you can see EMPH tried to get back up and then just started cracking through support. So I, I, I'm running away from EMPH. Looks like Raymond James is upgrading it to run to it. What do you trying guys to, think? Yeah, trying to buy low. Uh, you're getting a pop off it. I mean, maybe put a reminder if this thing shows stability and could hold 200. Maybe buy it on strength. But uh, a lot of people got smoked on this thing. So I think I think yeah. this is a little bit of uh, overhead supply in this one. This is just the energy trade too. Remember, and I, everybody mm -hmm. thinks, oh, solar you replaces energy, so solar moves opposite. It's not true. Actually, solar um, moves with energy. If you want to look at correlations here, so as you see oil come down, solar often follows suit here too. Again, we know relatively solar has done really well. I still like solar relative long term. I still think there's a good place for it there, but you're really catching a falling knife here with the ZNPH. Yeah, and I'd be careful, at least for the time being, on positive catalysts there. Um, a lot of people have just been more negative towards the ESG than I've ever seen. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Let's keep going. Oh, look what just popped up there for a second there. Meta. Meta popping up here. What do you guys think about Meta's chart? It's been unbelievably resilient. Again, there's rumors that TikTok was going to get banned. And it's not going to get banned. So you saw Meta popping up a little bit on that last week. I mean, they love, you know, the, the, the tech stocks right now. It feels like, you know, they do have a lot of cash. This isn't like, you know, a banking crisis stock here. And there's been flight to quality here. And Meta, I guess, is being deemed as quality, at least for now. Uh, if you're looking at uh, 201.90 was Friday's high. And that's well short of the closing high of the move at 204.93. I've kind of been on, not, I haven't been trading yet, but I, I just thought this thing eventually would come down and fill the gap. But uh, not not looking like that's a possibility right now, but uh, good job today, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to hop off. I'll let you finish yeah. up and uh, be back later on. All right. We'll wrap up with that. At least the stocks to watch. You guys can definitely check out, of course, trade zero. If can you, you do the wanted... down ones? I'll stick with yeah, you. Yeah, by all means. Let's do it. Yeah. Nice change tool. down here. Let's do it. 
Uh, let's get into the first one is PDD. Of course, we've talked a, lo a lot about PDD already. FRC, I think we've talked a little bit about FRC there. And then we get into CW, uh, CWeb. Um, that's interesting, of course, seeing the China names down. This this could be something to keep an eye out. PDD is a part of that, too. And with PDD being down, you're seeing all the pairs. Obviously, you got JD down, Baba down, China down overall. I still think market nervous about that meeting over the weekend there, too, which I didn't want to go into the weekend long just for that meeting. I mean, here's the one thing. You know, you just talk just technicals. It's yeah. so important to talk other things because, you know, you see the headline Friday, oh, cheese going, you know, to meet, you know, with Putin. I'm like, ah, oh, you can't be long china stocks going into this yeah you know tough. just for that reason and and again i didn't see that when i originally put the trade on i think wednesday i don't know maybe it wasn't even out there wednesday but you see that friday i was like ah going long and long weekend you know into the end of the weekend with this so i mean you got to just be cognizant there's so much information coming at us left right center stick to your benzinga pro you know stick you know and, and get that information there because uh, I tell you right now, it's very, it's so much new information coming at us all the time. That's why we get so much chop as new mm -hmm. information continues to come into this market. Now, there was uh, one here that's interesting to me to see it on here is uh, not Baba. There was FDX, uh, FedEx pulling back strong here. What do you think about this? Um, we did. I got a position on it, so I can't talk it. No worries. Uh, I'm, I, I, you see, I caught the one that we, we couldn't. They caught me into. finally. I got. You know it. You know it. Uh, it seems interesting to me. Definitely is pulling back there. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens there. Uh, let me see if there's any other one here to kind of mention here. Mm, this is just a China EV. Uh, I don't like China EV right now, especially with Tesla moving Which back. What do you think at? about Tesla? I was looking at LI, but. Oh. What do you think about Tesla overall? Tesla, I, I think, is an important one. Tesla, so I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> what L.I. L.I., L.I. Um, again, China. I'm tough in China. Is it China? L.I. is China, yeah, isn't it? It's China, 100%. Yeah, it's I'm, actually I'm, it's owned by It's tough China. to come into any Part Chinese of it. stock right now. <clears throat> too many unknowns. Too many unknowns. Too much risk. Same reason yeah. I'm not touching the banks, not touching Chinese stocks right now. Too much risk. Mobileye? Lo I love Mobileye. <laughs> I indirectly <laughs> own it for my Intel shares, which I wish I directly owned it. But yeah, uh, here's a stock, you know, on a pullback here. Actually, the hell chart looks pretty dang good, Mitch. It's held you know, up. You got a pullback here. Yeah. Again, I mean, I'm still nervous in this overall market, but I am so inclined to look more at technology companies here as opposed to banks. So I think on mm -hmm. the pullbacks here, I think I'm still looking at tech. I'd want a significant pullback, you know, on Mobileye. Maybe you get down the, near the 40s, but the chart looks actually pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't look bad and it's like definitely hung on, uh, especially for a newer stock, right? We've seen so many newer stocks just struggle right out the gates. This has not struggled. It has not even gone through that like first couple days low, which was at 24.85. We're at 43.58. We'll see what happens there in Mobileye. Getting out of our trade zero, you guys can always keep up with their extensive inventory of short locates. If you're a short trader out there and you're looking for abilities on how to short and maybe even have easy shorts, right? Not just only locates. I would definitely check out Trade Zero. I'm going to throw up the link here so you guys can get three months for free on Trade Zero's flagship software, Zero Pro. And we'll wrap up here. Dennis, last comments here for the market. What do you think about today? Oh, I'm very torn on today. I think you're going to see a lot of chop. You're going to see a lot of new information coming in here. I do. I, I, it's hard. And people's like, what do you buy in long term? I just can't do it. I can't go in stuff. I'm going in for trades on stuff, but I can't be entering stuff long term because I don't have enough information on how bad this banking crisis is going to get. I love the idea of you know an early Fed pivot here for the market's perspective. I think it's a bad for all of us because I think it's going to lead to more inflation here too. Fed's in a real hard place here. They don't want to cut rates. They don't want to even pivot. They want to stick with the inflation thing, but they know what the banking crisis thing is happening here. So we need more clarity. We need to see what's going to, going to happen with a lot of these <clears throat> other uh, regional banks. We need yeah. a vote of confidence. Like, I mean, if we get some confirmation that Berkshire actually is getting down and dirty in some of these regionals, that would give some confidence back to the market. But this market needs a vote of confidence, and Credit Suisse isn't enough. Will a no interest rate hike rate on Wednesday, would that be a vote of confidence, Dennis? Um, No, because then they're going to think like, what are you seeing that we don't see? Ah, <laughs> I think so it could actually be the opposite effect. I think they got to go the quarter and I, I yeah. think they go the quarter and pause temporarily mm -hmm. yeah and just <clears throat> like saying mention. we're pausing to get more information on the banking situation an understanding like a, like uh 
yeah, transitory pause. Call a it. transitory, transitory pause. pause. I think we're going to take a gonna moment happen. to assess the data. That's what yeah. I think is going to happen. Transitory pause. Because we're not going to give you the data. We need to assess it. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it goes, team. We'll see what happens this week. Like always, you guys can keep up with Dennis Dick, Triple D Trader. I'm sure he'll make some comments on Twitter this week. You guys keep up with them. Go do what you do best, okay, my friend. Give her. Get to your trading action. All right, that's going to do it for us here on Pre-Market Prep. Hope you guys really enjoyed our show. Like always, hit those thumbs up. We don't get enough likes here. I know that you guys are worried about your trading action, things going on, but please take a second. Hit that thumbs up. It really lets us know that you guys want to continue watching Pre-Market Prep and that we're going to keep doing it, right? And we love doing the show, but of course, we want your feedback. And that's as simple as putting a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you don't like the show, by all means, I got no problem. Put that thumbs down. But let us know what you think. Now, I do want to tell you guys, we did start, of course, none other than Japanese candlestick charting techniques. You guys want to go ahead and up your skills. Well, get over to the book club, of course. You guys want to read with us? Join us every Sunday. We're breaking through financial books. It's a financial book club that I started we're growing and growing every single day, almost to 400 members now. So if you guys want to join the book club, definitely hit the link here. I'll throw it up in the chat. And we're getting deep into the book now. We just did the first two chapters, which is kind of more of an introduction. So you still have a chance to join us on Japanese candlestick charting techniques. Come and learn some technicals. We'll talk all about them. And what I really want to do is at the end of that book, we're going to deep dive into statistical knowledge behind these patterns so come over if you guys want to learn a little bit more of technicals that's for the book club now to get you guys over to live trading action as Zunaid, ryan and i get after the market let's see what we can pull up our sleeves today and find some trades i'll see you guys on live trading and that's starting up in just about two minutes let's get right to the action now 